Hello, friends, and welcome to 3ABN Today Family Worship. My name is James Rafferty. I'm so glad you've joined us. We want to wish you, first and foremost, a very happy Sabbath. Mm -hmm. I am joined here with some great guests. We're going to have a super topic tonight. We're going to be talking about anger management from mm -hmm. a biblical perspective. That's right. And there's a lot of anger right now, a lot of rage. There's road rage, there's air rage. Everything is blowing up all around us. And we're going to learn how we can practically process some of that rage. Mm -hmm. So I'm joined here with my guests. Uh, we've got Donald and Janelle are with me, and also Pastor Ryan Day is with me. Uh, hi, Donald. Janelle, how are you guys hi. doing tonight? Doing, very good. Doing We've very been good. very blessed. Yes. Blessed. Right. Thank you for the invitation. Yes, this thank this you for is critical what we're talking about. It's a yeah. great, great topic, topic. something mm -hmm. that's really going to be, I think, mean, mean a lot to our viewers and hopefully a lot to us too. Definitely. Amen. <laughs> Ryan, how are you doing? Man, I am blessed as can be, can't complain. Uh, this is definitely a topic that I need to learn from. Okay. Uh, not that I'm an angry person, but you know, sometimes we have uh, challenges processing that anger as right. we were talking about mm -hmm. uh, in preparation for this. And so I'm, I'm glad to be able to join you in on the study. Right. Yeah, I don't want to uh, admit that I'm an angry person, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> I want to All tell right. you some, I'm going to tell everyone some secrets. Uh -oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So let's get started. Janelle, would you like to pray for sure. us? Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we can come together. Mm -hmm. We thank you for giving us tools from your Holy Word um, to deal with these things that come up, like the anger that we'll be talking about, that you did cover this in the Bible. And we have scriptures we can go to when we get angry. We thank you for this time we will spend now, and we ask and invite your Holy Spirit to be present. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, we're going to get right into our topic because we've got lots to cover. We're going to open our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 4, and let's just read verse 26. Ryan, would you be willing to read verse 26 for us uh, of Ephesians chapter 4 when you get there? Absolutely. So I'm reading from the New King James Version. Okay. Um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 says, Be angry and mm -hmm. do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. I like that translation. The King James is very similar. There are a number of translations that are similar to that, but there are some that are a little different, right? This is mm -hmm. the Amplified. Can I read from the Amplified? Yes, let's read from the Amplified. So I can see this. Be angry at sin, at immorality, at injustice, at ungodly behavior, yet do not sin. Do not let your anger cause you shame, nor allow it to last until the sun goes down. Okay, mm. that's mm. a little bit interesting. More that, right. isn't it? mm -hmm. It's interesting. I think you know. I read this verse many, many years ago, and I didn't understand it mm -hmm. because it seemed like a contradiction to me. Right. Mm -hmm. Be angry and don't sin. The contradiction was. <laughs> right. Isn't anger sin? Right, and right. and I really I struggled with that. I remember uh, not long ago I was angry. Adventist pastor. And uh, I was talking to an old friend, uh, mm. a mother in Israel, and she asked me the question. She said, she knew I was angry, and she said, you know, James, are you angry? And there was this long silence. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> like crickets. <laughs> and she said, you don't want to admit that you're angry, because she knew I was angry. Right. And I said, no. I said, because I'm an, I'm an Adventist. I'm a Christian. I'm a pastor. I'm not, how, I can't say that I'm angry. Yeah. And she wow. said, have you ever looked up the word anger? in the Bible. You ever done that? Mm. Not a whole lot. I can't say I have. I can't say I've done a specific study. I've right. read a lot of scriptures okay. about anger, mm -hmm. okay. but not, it wasn't right. until this very study, okay. yes. this conversation that I poured myself into kind of understanding what What did you find? Mm. 
Well, I found a lot of interesting things. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things which I know we'll kind of get into talking a little bit more about, but I was actually, I did a word search. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know, you know, what, what, in all of these instances where anger is mentioned, mm -hmm. is there a theme? Is there seems to be, does there seem to be kind of a common theme? Uh, you know, what, what concepts or situations are associated with in times where the word anger is used or, or an angry situation is being described in scripture. Mm -hmm. I found very interestingly enough, which is kind of to your point, mm -hmm. that it's at least from the perspective of the New King James Version that I was doing the research on, more than 90 times, or I think it was 90 or 91 times, where you find the anger of the Lord mentioned. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or, the, you know, turned away, yeah. or to, to turn away the fierce mm -hmm. anger of the Lord or his mm -hmm. hot anger. And so I'm thinking, wow, you know, God gets angry. This was the mm -hmm. point that was mm -hmm. being made to me by my mother in Israel. Mm -hmm. She said, James, you know, the word anger is associated with God more than with anyone else mm -hmm. in the Bible. And yeah. so you think it's a sin to be angry, but you find all these references in the Bible where God is angry. Now, the Amplified kind of brought that out. It that nice? directed us as yes. to what to be angry mm -hmm. at, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right. That was nice. But mm -hmm. the context of this verse is still seems like a contradiction. Be angry and sin not. Right. Mm. Don't let the sun go down in your wrath. So there's a double take there. Now I've read a number of Bible versions that kind of try to change wow. that meaning actually and make mm -hmm. it sound like it doesn't really mean what it's saying. And I actually hung this. What I do when I have a Bible verse that I don't understand, I just put it on a shelf. I just hang it up on a shelf. Right. Don't want let to it sit it. there. Yeah. yeah, and wait and wait and wait and wait. <laughs> But finally, it actually dawned on me, and we're going to look at that tonight as we connect the pieces with the Old Testament. We're going to actually going to look at the context of Ephesians 4 here, the rest of the verses, and then we're going to go back and see how that was exemplified practically in the experience of David. Mm -hmm. oh, we're going to yes. look at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 18 through about 24 or 26 sure. and his relationship with Saul. Can I just share? Yes. Um, the first time I read that verse, what came to my mind was how when we're tempted, mm -hmm. that the, the actual temptation is not a sin, but it's what you do with it. Mm -hmm. And I see the same thing with this in this verse about being angry. It's like it's presented to you, and what are you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can choose to sin by being angry and stewing on it and acting out or whatever, it's just like temptation. To me, it's very similar. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, too, when you're touching on it, it's interesting to me because there has to be, if God has anger, there has to be a healthy anger. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a healthy anger. There's, there's a right anger and a wrong anger. So it's <laughs> like it's like, going to drive you to do good yeah. or bad. Where's the healthy anger? Where's that balance to where mm -hmm. anger is acceptable and isn't? Like, that's where we're going. Right? That's where we're going. Okay. And I, I like what you're saying because this is the, this is the significance of what we're going to talk about here. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I found that men tend to do is men tend to stuff it. They bottle. tend to st bottle it up and stew on it. And I'll give you an example of this that I think of right away, and that is Job and his wife. Mm. Wow. And I think a lot of people misunderstand Job's wife. Mm. Um, they just lost everything, including 10 children. And she emotes right away. She's angry about this. And she just says, you know, curse God and die. I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, Job's wife apostatized and mm -hmm. she was just, you know. No, she was emoting. And I imagine Joe put his arm up around her and said, Honey, don't talk like a foolish woman. Right. Mm. We can receive good from the Lord and we can also receive evil. So he's kind of comforting her. But after you get past chapter two, where Job mm -hmm. is all, you know, he just suppresses his anger and he's all, Yeah, God, the Lord gives, mm -hmm. the Lord takes Watch away. Out. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> he loses it. Yes. He loses it. Mm. <laughs> you know, and, and it starts with his friends. They push the right buttons, mm. they begin to talk yeah. to him. Mm -hmm. And he's like, You know, I. I just never should have been born. Wow. Right. And then he goes on. I mean, in chapter 9, he just, poof, he really lets God have it. Yeah. And all the while, God says about Job from the beginning, there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was perfect. To the very end, Job is my man. Mm -hmm. And you, Bildad, and, and, and Zophar, and you guys mm -hmm. need to go to Job because he's going to pray for you. Mm. You, haven't, you haven't said those things that are right about me as my servant Job has. Job's anger was a, was a reflection of God's anger in a sense. Mm. Right. 
But yeah, again, similar. how does God process anger? Mm -hmm. yeah. How does it come out? You know, yeah. what, is it, what does it look like? And we're made in His image, so how do we process anger? And why are we angry? What is it that makes us angry? And, and then how does, how does that come out? What does it right. look like? I was going to say, too, what you're touching on, when I did prison ministry a few years ago before COVID hit, had a gentleman that just flared up. Um, he started getting real aggressive and kind of boisterous in the class. And God said, you got to nip that in the bud. And I'm like, these guys are inmates. I have no clue what these guys have done. There's 50 of them in the chapel. And I'm like, what do I do, Lord? I, I, what does guy, I don't know what he's done. You know, I'm like, I don't know what to expect. So I said, look, man, I said, you can't be doing that in this class. He said, mm -hmm. this is, your anger is affecting everybody else. We're starting to get kind of like, Mm -hmm. You could see, and I'm like, something's going to boil out of control. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I got to nip this. So I did. I'm like, Lord, I pray. You got to give me the words. I don't say this guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, just how God can turn a situation from mm -hmm. evil into good. And he, uh, the, now the gentleman's my friend. He always asks about me. Mm -hmm. When guys going to prison, hey, how's Donald doing, you know, and stuff. But it was just the fact that you got, yeah, anger can like manifest and it, mm -hmm. it, it kind of floods the room. It spreads. Mm -hmm. and it's just so contagious. Mm -hmm. And you got to learn how to control that anger. And I think in a right way, not like Job stuffing it down. Down, but mm -hmm. how, having a healthy way to have a healthy outlet. Here's something that's really interesting. All right. Let's read, uh, Ryan, would you be willing to read the rest of the verses of sure. this chapter? So we read verse 26. Mm -hmm. And if you could reread that and then go down through <coughs> verse 32. Absolutely. Ephesians chapter 4, we're going to start with verse 26 on to 32. It says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole still no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. of God, mm -hmm. by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot there. Mm -hmm. All of these verses come out of learning how to process our anger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see wow. the connection? Oh, yeah. Bitterness, mm -hmm. wrath, anger, forgiveness grieving the Holy Spirit, saying things about people. Right. Mm -hmm. We do all of that because we don't process our anger. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the story of Job, which we've already referred to, you see Job coming into some of these things. He, he and his friends get into this conflict. Mm -hmm. And Job eventually calls them miserable comforters, mm. worthless <laughs> physicians. Worthless. They call him a hypocrite, oh, man. a windbag. No, They're going back and forth. <laughs> Processing, processing, right, processing. Right. So <laughs> as I read these verses, I'm thinking, wow, and then it, it ends up with forgive as Christ has forgiven you. Well, that mm. was like when Christ was on the cross, mm -mm -mm. being crucified by the, by the Romans, by the Pharisees, by the religious leaders, he said, Father, forgive them. Mm. Mm -hmm. They don't know what mm -hmm. they do. Wow. Mm -hmm. So there's a key here. Verse 26 holds for us mm. a, some kind of ability to be able to process because really when you think about these verses you're thinking about things that come out of mm -hmm. being angry right right, right. Yeah. all that stuff's coming out yeah. mm -hmm. why is it coming out yeah and how do we process it i just i was just looking at verse 27 neither give place to the devil it's like yes you know as soon as that thought comes in our head to to be angry if we don't give that to the lord and we just sit there and start just thinking tomorrow. about stuff and assuming stuff maybe not even true, mm -hmm. you know, about the situation. Um, if we just, if we do that, we're giving place to the devil. I, need, and, I can read this out of the Amplify. It's so good what you just said. And do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge or nurturing anger or harboring resentment or cultivating bitterness. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's pretty deep. And I was just thinking about how Peter, you know, um, Jesus said something to Peter. He said that Satan is asked to sift you as wheat. Yes. But I'm praying for you, Peter, that when you are converting, I just reminded when, you know, they came to get Jesus and he took that sword out and he's like, oh, you better not touch my man. Oh, yeah, I'm going to slice that ear off. Yeah. You think about that. That's, that's anger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, that anger and that rage, like, you're not going to touch my Jesus. I'm going to mm -hmm. defend Jesus. I'm like, does mm -hmm. Jesus need to be defended? 
Mm-hmm. Kind of curious about that anger you can see. Mm-hmm. I, th- I see us doing the same thing, you know, as Christians many times. Okay, let's just use, look at the spiritual aspects of this. That sword that Peter had, you know, the Bible calls the Word of God a sword. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right? Serious, <laughs> and that sword is to be sharp. So we're sharpening right. up the Word of God. We got all of our Bible texts to prove the state of the day of the right. Sabbath and all the different things. And then, of course, Jesus is the truth. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm the way, the truth, not. He's the Word. And so when people attack the Word mm-hmm. with their heresies and with their unbelief or whatever, mm-hmm. we pull out our sword, our sharpened Bible mm-hmm. text, right? Mm-hmm. All right. And we start <laughs> whacking people's ears off. What does that mean? Well, yeah. they don't seem to be listening. Right. Mm. To what we're saying, <laughs> why not? Well, we couldn't be <laughs> their ear, off. whack their ear off, right? So they don't have anything to hear with anymore. And Jesus right. has to come along and, and put the ear back. Yeah, yeah. Mm, and many true. times that's that's, true. That, that's our experience. So many people right. use the word of God as an offensive weapon when it was meant to be used for as a defensive weapon. Okay. Mm. And so I think the ang- the concept of anger fits into that because oftentimes, right. what we, I guess, almost label as. Uh, kind of like what Paul was doing mm-hmm. before his conversion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was yeah, convinced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's angry at these Christians. He's mm-hmm. angry at this They're Christ, you know, who's mm-hmm. who's basically turned his whole religious experience, mm-hmm. you know, upside down and he's mm-hmm. angry at it and now he's going out with this what he thinks is a righteous indignation, mm-hmm. but it's not. Mm-hmm. It's right. a it's a very unhealthy anger that leads him to murder. It leads mm-hmm. him to, you know, falsely accuse and to imprison people, mm-hmm. to persecute. In fact, Paul even describes himself, I believe it's in the book of 1 Timothy. He says, I once was a, I once was a persecutor, or I once was a blasphemer, a persecutor. Mm-hmm. Yes. He describes his persecutive mm-hmm. mentality. Yes. Mm-hmm. In other words, taking upon himself his anger mm-hmm. and his, his anger that led him to this ra- angry wrath mm-hmm. against God, God's people mm-hmm. led him to blaspheme God mm-hmm. in the sense that he was taking the authority of God upon himself mm-hmm. to now go out and exercise this right. in people's lives. Mm-hmm. And so, just another example of that pro- processing. And I think I, th- I think that's probably what we're going to talk a lot about today. And, and that's certainly something I need to learn mm-hmm. is, is how to process that anger. Because mm-hmm. again, as we've established clearly, obviously anger in and of itself is not a sin. Mm-hmm. That's funny um, you mentioned that because yeah. I was thinking when you're Paul, he thought they were in the way. So literally he wanted to take them out of the way. Right. So that's kind of what his goal was to get them out of the way because they were mm-hmm. in the way. But. And I think that's a really good point, mm-hmm. this idea of blasphemy. You know, Jesus was accused of blasphemy because he said that he could forgive sins. Right. And so the Jews said, you know, only God can do that. So blasphemy from a biblical perspective is putting yourself in the place of God and doing right. what only God can do. Now, Jesus was God. He mm-hmm. was actually yeah. Yeah. not guilty of blasphemy. Right. Right. But for a human to put themselves in God's place and do what only God is mm-hmm. allowed to do. Right. And now we're going to apply that to anger. Mm. So Paul was putting himself in the place right. of God and he was dealing with this Christian church. Right. Well, you know, remember Gamaliel, he said, no, 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 you just didn't need to let them. We don't have the right to step in. And right. actually right. we need to let God deal with that. Right. Mm. And that's where our anger practically mm. comes mm. in. Mm. You know, when you're driving down the road and someone pulls in front of you or does something crazy, you have to back up and let God take mm-hmm. care of that. Mm-hmm. All right. I'll uh, give you, a, go ahead. No, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Well, I'll give you a little story. So I was driving from a camp meeting. I was filling up a big propane, a 20 gallon right. propane tank for showers. And I, they slid it in the back of my truck and it was real touchy, like it had a little bit of wiggle room. And mm-hmm. so I didn't want to slam my brakes on and have that thing slide down and hit mm, the front yeah. end mm. of my truck. So I was being really careful driving down the road to the gas station. And as I was driving down the highway, I saw a truck that looked like it might pull out in front of me. Mm. Oh, yeah. And if he pulled out in front of me, I was going to put, have to slow down fast and that yeah. thing was going to come sliding down. And yeah. sure enough, he pulled out in front of me. I was like, oh, we go. <laughs> so <laughs> I backed so up, you know, that thing hit, but it wasn't too bad, you know, because I saw it ahead of time. And the guy was going to the same gas station I was going to, and he was actually filling up propane tanks. And <laughs> as, we, as we got toward the gas station, he, he didn't take the first turn into the gas station, I did. Right. Mm. So I actually got to the propane tank before him. He went uh, up straight and then he came around this other way. And I thought, you know, I, I, I didn't get on his bumper. I didn't get mad at him. I didn't show, I, inside it was there, but I didn't show anything. Uh-huh. And I thought, yeah, look, 
That's what he gets. He, he went, I got there first. Here he is trying to get out there and get his thing. And I, and I got here first. And that, you know, I'm glad I didn't get angry. I just leave it in God's hands. He gave me, you know, mm -hmm. his just due. And mm -hmm. so I pulled up there with my 20 gallon. Now he mm -hmm. pulled around and he had like a couple of five gallons, right? And because even though I wasn't outwardly angry, because I was angry inside, right? I didn't process that. You know, what I should have done was I should have said, you know, you just got a couple of five gallons. I got this big 20 gallon. You go ahead and go first. Right? Oh, you didn't. No, that was the furthest thing from me. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping you would. Oh. <laughs> exactly. And this is what <laughs> God is really wanting us to see. Mm -hmm. right. In these anger opportunities, yep. they're the perfect opportunities to witness for right. God. Mm -hmm. The yeah. perfect opportunities. And I think that sometimes Satan can see, mm. I don't know how much Satan knows, but I've had instances where there was someone that I was supposed to talk to and, <clears throat> and like Satan tried to create a barrier mm -hmm. between me and that person mm -hmm. by either something they said or did just to like annoy me or something. Mm -hmm. And then I don't want to talk yeah. to them. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like what you're talking about. It's mm -hmm. like, then it's just like, there's that barrier there and you mm -hmm. don't want to approach that person. And I can see mm -hmm. I've had things like that happen before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at this with the story of David, mm -hmm. Old Testament story of mm -hmm. David and Saul. That's it's one of my favorite stories in all of the Bible. <laughs> All right, so let's just open our Bibles here to 1 Samuel, and we'll start with chapter 18. Now, we're not going to read the whole story because that would take a oh, long yes. time, <laughs> but we'll just kind of do an overview, right? That's right. Just of the part where David starts hanging out with Saul, and he's been asked to come and kind of sing, right? Singer in mm -hmm. Israel, sing, you know, and kind of Saul's again. being troubled because he's been yeah. disobedient to God. And whenever you turn it away from the Lord, you know, that opens the door for evil to come in. Right. So in 1 Samuel chapter 18, um, you know, Saul is basically being ministered to by um, David, right? But he's jealous. There you go, yeah, jealous. Jealousy and envy comes in. Mm -hmm. And as that begins to spring up, Saul gets upset. And he, he in verse 8, it's, the, they've ascribed to Saul thousands, but they've described mm. to David tens of thousands. Mm. You know, ooh, you baptize more people than I have. You know, they're saying, <laughs> they're saying right. you're a more pap yeah. popular preacher than I am. You get more uh, hits yeah. on YouTube oh, no. and you get more mm. hits on Twitter. Yes. And, oh, you know, stepping on toes now. Yes. <laughs> and so wow. because of this, you know, and what's really interesting really for us today is, you know, Ministry is all in God's hands. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Paul dealt with this in 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians 3, you know, where people were saying, I'm of Apollos and I'm of Cephas and I'm of Paul and I'm of Paul. And, and, and Paul says, that's, carna that's carnal yeah, thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. When you think that way, you're thinking yep. carnally. You know, you are all of Christ. Christ is the one that mm -hmm. works through all of this. He's the one that's ministering mm -hmm. and he's just working through human beings. Mm -hmm. We just happen to be. I think it's yeah. interesting when you're talking about with uh, Saul, it's like we see people today, they just love misery and they want you to be miserable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they want to keep you in that miserable pit with them. Mm -hmm. So they'll do anything to keep you distracted so you'll, you can't break out of that misery. It's kind of mm -hmm. like misery loves company. Company. Yeah, mm -hmm. it loves and, it. And, and, and often we're in situations where there's envy and jealousy mm -hmm. in God's church, in ministry. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, and that gives Satan a foothold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so Satan has this foothold of what he does with Saul is he, he gets him to throw a spear at David. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he tries to take his life. And right. the grace of God is what, you know, David's able to, you know, right. get away from that. And he takes off, right? right. And the first thing he does in the context of this is um, David takes off and he goes to his house and he um, tells Saul's daughter, who happens to be his wife, yeah. he tells, tells okay. Saul's daughter, Michael, and um, Michael, now I'm, I'm, I'm giving an overview of the story here, so I'm not getting into all the details, but in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 19, Michael pretends that David is hiding in the, or sleeping in the bed and he's sick. Yes, mm. he's all the right? stuff up. The goat hair. The goat's <laughs> hair and all that kind of stuff. Statue she put. They're actually watching the house. Right. They, the, Saul has sent men to watch the house because now Saul is openly trying to kill David. It's, it's happened more than once. Saul is married to Michael. She, he goes home. He's in the house. She puts this dummy in a bed, that, or they do, the goat's hair, and he sneaks out a window. Mm -hmm. right? No one sees him sneak away. Finally, Saul says, bring me the whole bed. And she, he discovers, you know, that right. it's not David. Mm -hmm. And he's upset at his daughter. And then she basically says, well, he told me he'd kill me if I didn't do this. Okay, mm. so she kind of so saves her life. She, right. she gets out of it. And David takes off. Right. 
right? And he ends up in the wilderness, and there are a lot of men that follow him out there. Um, Jonathan loves David. David and, and Jonathan have this great relationship. So as David uh, flees from Saul, they have this relationship where Jonathan tries to feel things out, and sure enough, mm -hmm. he realizes that, you know, Saul wants to kill him. And why do you want to kill, you know, and, and he can't reason with him. So David takes off. He's got uh, hundreds of people that join him out in the wilderness. He gets the sword of uh, Goliath from the priests of Nob and mm -hmm. actually puts them in peril, unfortunately. Right. And they eventually end up being killed by this king. That Saul is going crazy. His envy and jealousy are taking him down, down, down. Right. And eventually what happens is David is in this cave hiding from Saul, and Saul comes mm. into the cave with just one man. <laughs> right. Okay, this is where we pick up the story. Yeah. Now, what's interesting about the story is, uh, I don't know how biblical, what kind of background you have in the Bible. I know you were raised a Christian, right, Ryan? Sure. Okay, so you're familiar with the Bible. How about you guys? Not really. Do you ever remember the first time you read this story? It's it's been a long time ago. I remember the first time I ever read this story. Really? Yeah. yeah sure. I, the reason I remember the first time I read this story is because I'm reading the story, right? <laughs> I'm in 1 Samuel 24. And this is what, this is what, let's just read these verses. Ryan, read these verses for us. Um, 1 Samuel 24, verses <laughs> 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. It says, Now it happened when Saul had turned from following the Philistines, that it was told to him, saying, Take note, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. When Paul took 3,000 chosen men from all Israel and went to seek David and his men on the rocks of the wild goats. So he came to the sheepfolds by the road where there was a cave and Saul went in to the, attend to his needs. David and his men were staying in the recesses of the cave. Then the men of David said to him, this is the day of which the Lord said to you, behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand, that you may do to him as it seems good to you. And David arose and secretly cut off a corner of Saul's robe. <laughs> All right, let's just stop right there. <laughs> I'm reading this for the first time, right? And I'm reading, you know, the previous chapters, David, Saul is envious, he's disobeyed God, God's replaced him with David, David has been anointed, you know, to replace him. And then Saul's trying to kill David, he's full of envy, and you know, he's, he's upset at this, <laughs> right? <laughs> you go. I'm reading this, I'm reading this, I'm reading this. He's upset at even his, his son and his daughter, and he's killing the pri pri priest of Nob, and, and David is just this anointed guy that's just trying to get away. And finally, right, right. he gets in this cave, and his men basically say to him, this is an answer this to prayer. This is, an, no, this is an answer to prayer. This is an answer to prayer, right? Oh, and I'm like, yeah, it sure is. Yes, sure yeah, is. It gonna, sure is. Take advantage of this moment. Yeah. Let's, let's just, and, I, and it's the same thing I was thinking with that propane tank. Mm. Right. Mm. Yeah, see, see, mm. see, he got, he's getting his. He's about to get it he's now. He's about to yeah. get it now. <laughs> and then it says, you know, that hmm. David, David cuts off Saul's rope. rope. Oh, he's like. How much self-control yeah. he had. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, almost disappointed in your like, own carnal yeah, yeah. mind. It's yeah. like, bro, like, this is your opportunity. No. Just take him out. Blew it. You, all you can cut off is a corner of his robe, <laughs> right? And it comes back to me, with the verse you just mentioned, Don. Um, when thou art converted, strengthen mm. thy brethren. Mm. Oh, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. and, and I had to ask myself, am I even converted? Mm. He cut off his robe privately? Mm. And then we'll read the next couple of verses here in a second. But I'm thinking in my brain, what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? And I had, I had to question my conversion at that point. I thought, right. am, I, am I even converted? But right. what I realized with Peter and, and the disciples is they were, they were completely converted. But conversion is not a one-time thing right. Mm -hmm. that ends. Conversion right. is a growing mm -hmm. experience. Exactly. And I think the disciples were, I'm just going to put it this way, intellectually converted, mm -hmm. yeah. but they needed to grow in a heart experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think a lot of times we Christians are intellectually mm -hmm. converted. Mm -hmm. right. We know the doctrines and we yeah. believe the Bible and Christ is the Messiah. That's what Peter said, you're the Messiah. Yeah. Mm. But then when it came to the cross mm. and dying to self mm. right. and the ability to forgive Applying people it. who are crucifying us, mm -hmm. yeah. well, Peter was going to get to that place. Mm. He was going to be crucified right. upside down eventually, mm. right? Mm -hmm. But he still had a lot of growth. To and we have those weak moments. Yes. And that doesn't mean it's who we are, though. Right. Yes. God, he's not that's a good point. Theory. That's a good point. That's we have those weak moments, and it doesn't mean we have to be identified by those right. moments. As I'm looking at this, as I'm looking at this story, and I'm comparing it to what we just read in Ephesians. So mm -hmm. if we go back to Ephesians here, 
tucked in the middle of all of this conversation here about how we should be angry but not sin, mm -hmm. you know, how we should let no corrupt words proceed out of our mouth, but mm -hmm. that which is necessary for edification, mm -hmm. go down a little bit further, let no bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with mm -hmm. all malice. Okay, uh, being kind to one another, mm -hmm. tucked in the middle of all of this, verse 30. Mm. It, almost, it almost seems like it doesn't fit okay. because it's like talking about, you know, being, being angry but not, you know, not sinning. Do not mm -hmm. let the sun go down on your wrath, you know, mm -hmm. uh, nor give place to the devil. So it's not like giving instruction, but then right there tucked in the middle of this passage here in verse 30. Yeah, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God mm -hmm. by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words, all of this is starting to, you know, with, within the context of, this, of what we're talking about here, it's all depending on, you're going to respond one way or the other depending mm -hmm. on which Spirit's leading you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now that I'm over here in 1 Samuel, mm -hmm. you've got to take into consideration this story that we're reading from, from chapter 18 now here to chapter 24 where we left mm -hmm. off. This is all immediately proceeding. Of course, we know a few years go by over yeah. the span of this, 13 or so years. But... 18 is coming right, chapter 18 is coming right off the cuff of David having just slayed Goliath yep. in the previous mm, chapter yep. in chapter right. 17. 17. Now, automatically we see a separation between the spirit of David and the spirit of Saul. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing, the, the script, the, it, David couldn't, would have, would have probably never have been the man he had been mm -hmm. had he not taken the position mm -hmm. because he was, he was being led by the right spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. Saul could have been that man. Saul could have mm -hmm. said, okay, look, this is my, mm -hmm. this is my job. I'm the, I'm the king. I'm the protector. And I know that God is leading this nation. Mm -hmm. So he could have with not a spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but a spirit of boldness, just like David went out there and said, okay, Lord, I'm going to trust mm -hmm. in you to get me through this. Mm -hmm. And you know, Saul could have been that champion. Mm -hmm. But what do you see? Saul responds with a spirit of fear. Ooh, mm -hmm. just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. David, your Goliath is huge. Mm -hmm. Nine foot mm -hmm. nine. Mm -hmm. you you know, this guy, I mean, armor, 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 and armor, and armor, armor the weight of 125 pounds, mm -hmm. sword as big and tall as men mm -hmm. stand, you know, the tip of his spear, 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy was huge. Mm -hmm. And now he's responding with a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. And that spirit of fear leads him mm -hmm. to succumb to the spirit of the enemy mm -hmm. versus David's out there with lead by the spirit of the Lord. No and armor. he's not, he does not have a spirit of fear, but he mm -hmm. trusts in God. No and it leads him to respond through this whole thing in a way that, a person who is not led by the spirit of Satan, but rather by the spirit of God mm -hmm. is going to respond. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I could take this guy's life right now, but I know that's not my God, my God's will. Mm -hmm. God is not a God of, of, of death. He's, he wants to preserve life. Mm -hmm. And so he had an opportunity to kill this brother and to express his anger, right? Just, mm -hmm. oh, this guy, he's given me so much trouble. It's been years now and he mm -hmm. keeps trying to kill me at time after time after <laughs> time. But you could see the spirit of the, of the Lord all over this man when he's just like, snip. Okay, I got him. I'm going to show him. <laughs> that I could have hey, <laughs> killed you, but I didn't. took your life, bro. Right. But, you know, but what would Saul have done? Mm -hmm. Saul, the first chance, obviously, is he's attempt after attempt trying to take David's life. Mm -hmm. You see rage in the heart of Saul, mm -hmm. anger in the heart of Saul, mm -hmm. and it's based on the fact that he's not led by the right spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's being led by the spirit mm -hmm. of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And here you have David, who has really, from many of our perspective, probably our carnal human perspective, this guy's got every right to be angry. Every right. Mm -hmm. Every right to be like, all right, that's it. And I'm done. so did I. Yeah. Right. And so do we. <laughs> right? right? I was going to say with uh, Saul, though, if you look in verse 3, this is how bad, how can we put this? This is how far fear and um, hatred will go. Verse yeah. 3 in yeah, 1 Samuel 20 mm -hmm. said, And David swear moreover and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes. This is talking about him and Jonathan. Mm -hmm. And he saith, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, uh, there is but a step between me and death. Mm. So I just thought about that, how, how we handle ourselves. It says, I think Paul wrote it, you know, by we can either be an aroma f for um, life or an aroma for death. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. I saw that uh, so much so that it goes a little bit later in that chapter 20. And Saul actually tries to kill his own son. Mm -hmm. You think about the love between Jonathan. Jonathan was rightfully supposed to be the next king. Right. He said, mm -hmm. take my armor, take mm -hmm. my sword, yes. take my stuff. I know you are rightfully the king. And then mm -hmm. so Saul is going, he throws a javelin literally in verse 33 mm -hmm. at, at uh, Jonathan. And in verse 34, and this is how far um, anger goes. Mm -hmm. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I went from dad to son, mm -hmm. because I think for me, I think Jonathan really was kind of almost like Christ there. He was standing in mm -hmm. behalf of this evil being Saul and David the next to be king. It's almost like Christ as our advocate. 
saying it in, in the middle for us, mm -hmm. kind of like how he did that. I thought that was really unique that he, he had so much love for David. He said, look, this is my dad. is totally out of his mind. Yes. He's just, mm. even my dad just makes me angry. You know, like I want to just take him out. <laughs> Jonathan's what I consider to be a biblical bunter. Yeah. You know, when you look at the game of baseball, right? Mm -hmm. The bunter is the one who sacrifices himself to right. bring a run home. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. He gets up there in this little bunt. He hopes to get the first base, but the point is, is to get the runner home. Right, right. right. So he just sacrifices himself, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? Yeah, because he could have. He, he could. Like, he could have been jealous of oh, David yeah. that he was anointed to be the next yeah. king. Yeah, and, and he's Saul's son. Yeah. He could have joined really Daddy. Different. He yeah. could have joined like, Daddy. Who's this guy? And many times when you look in the Bible and in, in life, they do. The son does join the father. Mm -hmm. right. And they work together, you know, with the same spirit. But I like what you said earlier, Janelle, and that is, we're not identified by our slip-ups. You know, when you look at David, uh, he, he messed up later on. And one of the key sections of scripture that we read about his repentance is Psalm 51. Yes. yes. Beginning with right. verse 10. And this ties into what you're saying about the key issue about mm -hmm. being sealed with the Holy Spirit. So those verses, creating me a clean heart, O Lord, renew a right spirit within me. Right. Cast me not away from my presence yeah. Yeah. and yeah. take not take your Holy Spirit yes, from yes, me. Yes. Renew unto me, restore to me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with your free spirit. Right. Then shall I teach transgressors mm, your ways mm. and sinners will be converted unto you. This is the point. Let's read the next two verses. Um, Donald, read those two verses for us, would you? Uh, verses Where are we at? five and six of 1 Samuel 24. Okay. Five and six. Five and six, sure. Mm -hmm. right there. Five and six. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. All right, mm. so, wow. yeah. interesting. wait a minute here. Hold on a second. All you did was, you could have killed him. All you did was just, you could have really laid him out, and all you did was kind of mar his, his kingly mm. authority, right? You just said a couple, you know, you didn't do a lot. You know, you just kind of, you know, just to, that was your your smote about you. You feeling convicted? You shouldn't yeah. even have done that. Mm -hmm. And and then and then what do you do? You say that he's the Lord's anointed. Mm -hmm. Don't didn't Clearly. you just hear about what he did to all the priests and not? <laughs> yeah. How he tried to kill even his son. Then what makes him the Lord's anointed? Yeah. yeah. Well, what makes him the Lord's anointed is that he was the Lord's anointed. That's right. Mm -hmm. God anointed him. And think about David's example to his the men that were with him. Think about that example and how. That's the point. They were, mm. he, his influence was. Then mm -hmm. sinners will be converted unto yeah. you because mm -hmm. those sinners and this sinner were like, kill him, David. What's, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> we need, I need to be converted. In a sense here, David is a type of Christ because that's exactly what the way Christ was towards his disciples. Mm -hmm. yeah. You mentioned Peter earlier with the whole chopping mm -hmm. off of the ear thing. But even, you know, we think of the beloved disciple John, right? Mm -hmm. And James, his brother, the sons of thunder. Mm -hmm. You know, I think of the story right. of when, you know, they, when these people, angry men, you know, come against Christ and the apostles. Mm -hmm. there and won't let them in the particular region that they're traveling to. And what does James and John say? You know, Lord, you know, should we, so we just, you know, you know just call fire down from heaven right now? Because they're responding what? Out of anger. Like, mm -hmm. who are they? Mm -hmm. to talk to the master of the universe mm -hmm. like this. They were angry. Mm -hmm. They were upset. But yet Crying. Jesus comes in. He's like, no, mm -hmm. no, no. Mm -hmm. That's not the way we're aware to respond. And so I see in this, in this sense, what we're reading here is David is that type of Christ. He's, mm -hmm. he's showing the example like, guys, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, it's his humility. He's showing mm -hmm. his humility like, look, this is still the king. I mean, this mm -hmm. is still the guy. Even though he's mm -hmm. not responding, even though it seems like the spirit of the Lord is not leading him, this is God's chosen. Mm -hmm. And we're going we're gonna to treat him with respect. Mm -hmm. You know what Seth? I was? Go ahead. I was just thinking about, like, we kind of get the, the inside scoop in Psalms, though, like, um, David and his reaction here was very godly. But inside, you know, all these things that were happening, and we see in Psalms, like, when he was, like, you know, Lord. That's where we're going next. You know, okay. That's where we're well, going next. But I, I'm just thankful for these, you know, yep. those uh, examples that we can see that, you know, men and women of God, they, they have these these emotions and, do. and, and giving it to God. It's like it doesn't yeah. hurt to put it out there to him. And that's why I love the Psalms. And I think yeah. that what's interesting to me is if this had not happened to David, would he have wrote all those psalms that he did mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. today? I mean, so many of those psalms touch so many people. Mm -hmm. And what you find interesting is you fast forward, obviously, Saul's life. He went, he went so out there that he sought after a witch mm -hmm. and literally had, he fell on his own sword. I mean, mm -hmm. how shameful is that? Mm -hmm. Kill your own self. He mm -hmm. fell on his own sword. Mm -hmm. uh, 
wow, I mean, yeah. that's how far you get down with that anger. Mm -hmm. It just takes you that far down. All the way down. So, Janelle, would you read verse 7 for us too? We'll just wrap it up here and then we're going to go to the Psalms, which you... So David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul, but Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. Mm. So this is really powerful because David not only himself restrains himself, but he also restrains others. Mm -hmm. And we see this with Christ, remember? Yeah. With mm -hmm. Peter. You know, so Peter gets the sword, cuts the ear off, and, and Jesus goes immediately out there and says, put up thy sword. Yes. Right? And when we translate this, you've got a power in Revelation chapter 13 that's blasphemous. Mm. That power is putting himself in the place of God and doing right. to God's people what only God has the right to do, right? right. You, controlling anger, no man can buy or sell, you're going to be, you're going to be dangerous. And then you've got these, the, the, the other people that are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, right? Mm. And right. they have a completely different response. He that kills with the sword will be killed the sword. Here's this, the patience and the faith of the saints. That's what it says in Revelation chapter 13. What is it? Verses 8, 9, and 10. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at this, this story is for us when we get down to this final crisis. Right. Mm. We've got to learn how to manage anger because anger is yeah. going to come at us. Right, right. How are we going to be able to respond to that? Right, right. What you were just saying reminded me of the verse, I think it's in the three angels' messages, right before the three angels' messages, oh, no five. guile. There was no mm -hmm. guile found in, in their, their mouth. mouth. Oh, in verse five, yeah. Revelation 14, 14, 5. All right, how do we get there? Let's go to Psalm 59. How do we get there? Psalm 59. Psalm 59. Now, what do we got? we're going to go through an outline here that I've entitled, I mean, I, it's an acronym um, that's really helped me. It's mm. HELPS, H-E-L-P-S, okay? And we're going to see this acronym, this outline in Psalm 59. And we're also going to see that it's found in a lot of the Psalms. Right. Once, once we see it in this Psalm, we're going to realize, you know what? David does this a lot. This is in Psalm yeah. 59. It's in Psalm 55. It's in Psalm 72. It's, yeah, it's just in a lot of Psalms, right? Where there's a basic outline. And, you know, we're talking about right now anger management from a biblical perspective. This is a biblical perspective of how to have anger management. Now, I don't know what your verse, what your Bible say. Does, does anyone have a little explanation before the verse starts of what the context of this is? Mm -hmm. What does it say? Well, mine, you talk about the, little, the bold yeah. word says yeah. the assured judgment of the wicked. Okay, not that one. No, I want a, an explanation of the context of the story. Anyone got that? Uh, mine says to the chief musician, Altest. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Yes. Victim of David when Saul sent and they watched the house. Oh, oh, okay. 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 Yeah. We got this one. what mine says as well. Okay, yeah. all right. So basically this psalm was written... Mm -hmm. When Saul was watching David's house, he had just tried to kill him, mm -hmm. and the dummy's put in the bed, and David sneaks out. This is the context. David's, mm -hmm. this psalm right here, right, mm -hmm. is taking us back to the history that we just read in right. 1 Samuel, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. right? 18 to 24. All right, here's where it starts. Now, we're going to look at this acronym, and it's yeah. going to start out with H. H rep represents ask God for help. So what we're doing here is we're, we're learning how David processes his anger because mm -hmm. what happened is David got to a place that his many weren't even at. Mm -hmm. David got to a place somehow where he could not only let Saul go, but even cutting off his robe caused him to feel condemned, yeah, right. convicted. Right. He shouldn't have done that, right? Yeah. How did he get there? The first thing he did. Let's read the first couple of verses, Ryan. Can you read those for us? Uh, Psalm 59 verses 1 and 2. Okay, it says, Deliver me from my enemies... O oh my God, defend me from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloodthirsty men. All mm. right, so this is the first thing that David is doing. He's calling out to God for help. Mm -hmm. The H in this mm -hmm. acronym of helps, the H stands for help. We ask God to help us. Help me, Lord, deliver me. These guys are out to kill me. They're out to get me. They're bloodthirsty men, right? right. So he's, he's asking God for help. So the first thing we want to do when we're dealing with processing anger is we want to reach out to God and ask Him to help us. Mm -hmm. We Absolutely. just want to say to Him, yeah. hey, I just need your help right now. Yeah, I'm not in a good place. Uh, I feel like I'm just going to lose it. I'm going to pop this guy. <laughs> Whatever it is, right? Yes. Okay? Right, right. We just want to ask God to help us. All right, let's go to the next two. Janelle, Janelle would you read me the next two verses? Read us the next two verses, verses three and four. Okay. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake to help me and behold. All right, so now the E in helps 
explain. The mm -hmm. E represents explain. So first, he has got, asked God for help, and now in verses three and four, he's explaining his situation. Mm -hmm. Here's what's going on. So we go to God and we say, oh, you gotta help me. I'm losing it right now. My buttons are pushed. Here's my situation. I, you know, I'm driving down the road. I'm being a really good driver. And this guy pulls out of nowhere, <laughs> pulls right in front of me, puts on his brakes, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm driving a semi. I've never driven a semi before. Whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're just explaining the details of your situation. I mean, have you ever been in a situation where you felt frustrated, upset, angry at something and or someone and you go talk to a friend about it mm. Mm. And yeah. you, just, you just get all that frustration out you just feel so much better yeah you know you feel so much better wave yeah but you know you went and talked to this person now you've given them all this right. stuff and maybe it's someone they know you yeah. know or some situation that they know oh, they're burdened and so what god yeah. is saying i want you to come to me yeah mm. i right. want you to ask me for help right and i want you to spill your guts because yeah. i know if you just spill your guts and tell me all about it you're going to feel better yeah you're going to yeah. feel better right yeah. So, first of all, he's asking for help. Second of all, he's explaining the situation. Now, mm -hmm. Donald, read for us, all the way down here, read for us uh, verses, let's just read verse uh, 13. Verse 13. Verse 13, yeah. There's a lot of them, but th this one will do good. Consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be, and let them know that God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth. Selah, think on this. David is talking about Saul here mm. and those men that are complicit in him. You know, Ryan, you mentioned that probably was 13 years, you know, from mm -hmm. this time that David ended up, you know, becoming king. So yeah. David is in a situation where he wants God to consume Saul. That mm. prayer is not answered for 13 years. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we think, wow, God, you've given me this trial for 13 years. But we might want to think, well, you know, maybe David needed 13 years of this mm -hmm. to develop and refine his character. Right, because right. you remember the way he acted toward Jabal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. right? Shortly after he treated Saul with all this grace, this other guy refuses to give him and his men any provisions. And he says, I'm going to kill every male mm -hmm. in that little, you know, yeah. area, that little village. I'm going to kill right. every male. He loses it. Apparently, I don't know if there's any psalm where he processes his anger with right. your ball, mm -hmm. right? And you see this with David. You see this with many biblical characters. Yeah. You know, when, John, when uh, Joshua goes into the promised land, you know, he prays about Jericho and he does what God says. And then there's this little place called Ai, you know, this little village, you know, yeah. right? And he's like, oh, yeah, we'll just go take that out. Mm. No, you're not going to go take yeah, that yeah. out. Yeah. You need God's help. So, yeah, I can so yeah. sometimes we go to God and we ask for help and we process and then sometimes we don't, yeah. right? It's quite interesting because when you reference that story, it was actually Abigail, Nabal's wife, yes. who yes. ended up yes. kind of just calming him down. Yes. And, yes. Yes. But she would end up becoming his wife, David's mm -hmm. wife, actually. Mm -hmm. right. You know, interesting. Something <laughs> that I was going to say is, you know, on the H that we covered under the HELPS acronym, mm -hmm. um, and what came to my mind was asking God for help, but also asking Him, why am I angry right now? Mm -hmm. You know, like, why is this, what is it? that's happening in my heart that is causing me to be angry, to mm -hmm. ask him to show us mm -hmm. the motive there or the, mm -hmm. the reason mm -hmm. why I am angry because maybe maybe there's something deep that I just haven't seen mm -hmm. that's causing this anger. So at least for me, that would, that would be something that I would want to mm -hmm. ask God, you know, mm -hmm. ask him for help and say, you know, ask him to show me why I'm angry at this moment. Mm -hmm. One, if I could read something real quick. Mm -hmm. This is really good out of Christ Object Lessons, page 171. It really fits well. It says, when trials arise that seem unexplainable, kind of like how Saul is acting today, we should not allow our peace to be spoiled. Mm. However, unjustly we may be treated, let not our passion arise. By indulging a spirit of retaliation, we injure ourselves. Mm -hmm. I like that. Powerful. We destroy our own confidence in God and grieve the Holy Spirit. There is by our side a witness, a heavenly messenger who will lift up for us a standard against the enemy. He will shut us in with the bright beams of the Son of Righteousness. I love this next part. Beyond this, Satan cannot penetrate. Mm. He cannot pass this shield of holy light. Yeah, that awesome. sounds like, in a sense, a summary of Ephesians chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Grieve the Holy Spirit. Right. You know, the bitterness, the anger, the wrath causes us to grieve the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt justified in being angry and afterwards you felt 
bad about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> I know why David's angry at Saul. Saul's trying yeah. to kill him. Yeah, Saul yeah. killed all the priests of Nob. Mm -hmm. I don't have to ask God, why is David angry? I know why he's angry, mm -hmm. but the point is, and I think you're making a good point here, is why am I wanting to, to do this to another person? Mm -hmm. Why am I right. wanting to manifest this anger toward mm -hmm. this person? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why we want to do that is because we haven't processed the anger. Mm -hmm. We haven't right. learned how to process the anger. Mm -hmm. We don't know what to do with anger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We just don't know what to do with it, right? <laughs> Story of my life, man. <laughs> okay. In fact, in fact what, what, as we're reading through this, this helps. I didn't even know about this until we did this lesson, but I found mm -hmm. myself kind of, maybe not every single point, but I find myself in a lot of these points. Yes practicing this mm -hmm. you know i'm driving down the road i have i i, I have I, i've admitted many times on, on air that i have a patience problem mm -hmm. and oftentimes you know a lack of patience mm -hmm. uh, leads to you know outbursts in anger mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so driving down the road get behind someone that's purposely driving under the speed limit mm -hmm. and, and i really need to be somewhere on time and i'm all about being on time you know or mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. and, and or just whatever the situation may be and i find myself just i, I can i can the tense i get mm -hmm. tense i get angry mm -hmm. and i'm just like you know i'm, I'm losing it and I find myself going oh, <laughs> Lord <laughs> help Lord Jesus help that's real <laughs> you know, giving it to him yeah. Lord you see what situation Lord help me you know and so I find myself more and more as I get older you know I find myself in those moments and I'm saying God I, I mm -hmm. need you to mm -hmm. I need you to take control of this this mm -hmm. this this take this bull by the horns mm -hmm. and and do something with it because mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to I'm going to have an outburst of anger mm -hmm. that's not good you know okay. oh, yeah. I have a something that personal that um, as far as a while back, you know, there was this one individual that like, I just, when I thought of him, I just always was angry. I'm like, mm. what am I doing? I'm like, why am I so angry? So I prayed the Lord would show me, uh, I wrote this down, so I'm trying to remember all of it, but um, I wanted him to show me how he sees this person mm. instead of me getting angry. And then what I saw in my mind, when I saw this person, he drew a heart, like a, I'm a visual person. Mm -hmm. so he drew a heart around this person, like around them. Mm -hmm. And so now when I'm upset with someone or have, you know, bad or bad feelings towards them, then he shows me this heart around this, whoever it is, mm -hmm. he just draws a heart around them. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. I mean, that helped me mm -hmm. in that Amen. situation. Amen. And now when I, wow. you know, get angry, upset with that person, I just, <laughs> For me, uh, it would be uh, 1 Corinthians 13 always comes to my mind. Mm -hmm. I, have, I put scripture in my head and I try to remember those things. I had a prayer line caller. Mm. If I could put my hands through a phone, I probably would ring this person's neck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so I hung up on him. Mm -hmm. Probably wasn't the right thing to do, but mm -hmm. sometimes people really push your buttons. But mm -hmm. yeah, just uh, putting that 1 Corinthians 13 into practice, man. Love mm -hmm. is patient. Yeah. Love is mm -hmm. kind. Does not easily provoke. I'm like, ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. It's so easy to get provoked. You're just like, mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> so you give you give your anger and frustration to God. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I, I think of Matthew 11 with the help. You know, the H E L. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the help. You know, I think of you know giving that frustration to the Lord. Matthew 11, mm -hmm. 28 to 30. Jesus says, "Come unto me, all you labor mm -hmm. and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest." He says, mm -hmm. "Give it to me. I'll take it upon me." What does that look like? What did it look like with David? When you read the Psalms, when you let's just read this verse again. When you read this verse here in the Psalm, verse 13. Consume them in wrath, consume them that they may not be, and let them know that God rules in Jacob and to the ends of the earth. Think about this. And I, we really need to think about this because there's a lot of anger in the Psalms. Mm -hmm. And what is David doing? He's letting his anger yeah. out. He's not suppressing it. Right. He's yeah. not pretending, I'm just He's a nice him. guy. Yes. I, don't, I don't ever lose my temper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I, no, no. And he, <laughs> he can't push my man. buttons. <laughs> right. Create the end. This is Chase. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, it's you again. Right. I, did I just hang up on you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, we need to let our anger out. Sure. Well, up to who? To the caller? Yeah. Right. To the guy at the gas station, right? Yeah. To the person who pulls in front? No, to God. Mm -hmm. right. God has big shoulders yes. and he can handle it. And so this is what I love. This is, I believe, why David is called, right? The, the, the man with God's heart, yeah. right? Because God is angry. He's angry at sin. Remember the Amplified? It was yeah, so yeah. good. He's angry yeah. at injustice. He's angry at unrighteousness. Job was angry. Man, he was angry. God, I'm angry right now. And I, if, if, I, if I took you to court, I bet you wouldn't even show up. That's what he says. In mm. Job chapter 9. I bet you wouldn't even show up, wow. right? Mm. Wow. And God's like, I'm good with that. I'm okay with that. Because I get. Chapter 38. Yeah. <laughs> well, not till, because right. he's still, he's still like, right, right. I'm showing up now, Job. 
is well, there anything else you needed to say to me? Yeah, you know, yeah. because, and he's not, he says at the end, he says, you haven't ta talked what was right about Lee, like my servant Job did. Right, my right. servant Job was angry about this. You were trying to justify and, you know, protect your theology. And well, if you're suffering, there must yeah. be something wrong with you, mm. Job. No, there's nothing wrong with me. Right, right, right. Uh, if I could share this uh, really good nugget I found from uh, Child Guidance, uh, page 95 says, he that is slow to anger, says the wise man, is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit, then taketh a city. The man or woman who preserves the balance of the mind when tempted to indulge passion, stands higher in the sight of God and heavenly angels than the most renowned general that ever led an army to battle and to victory. And it's just the whole, the whole quote is really good, but it, uh, I, just, I just looked at that and I said, wow. Mm -hmm. Because in God's sight, when we're tempted to indulge in passion and we give that to him and have that under his yes. control, it's, it's more important to him than an, a, a successful general in an yeah. army. So how do we do that? See, how do we do that? That's what we're reading in the Psalms. You know, you read the Psalms and you see all this anger. You read the book of Job and you see all this anger and you're thinking, man, David must have had an anger issue, must have had anger. Mm -hmm. No, because David is talking to God. Mm -hmm. You can read these statements and you can say, oh, yeah, that's what we need to do. And you mm -hmm. can just kind of tuck it away and say, yeah, I hope that I get to that place where I can just not be angry at, you right. know, certain circumstances, mm -hmm. certain people in certain situations. Mm -hmm. And then those situations come back and all of a sudden you go through the whole mm -hmm. process again. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we haven't learned how to process anger from a biblical perspective. Mm -hmm. yes. David knew how to yeah. do that. And when he did it, and he did it often, mm -hmm. he came to the end of this process, right? Help me, Lord. Right. Here's my situation. Explain my situation. Let it out. Right. Consume them. Just take them out. Just right. right? <laughs> and then notice what he says at the very end. Mm. Read this for us, Donald. These, these last verse couple of 16, verses, 17. verses 16 and 17. But I will sing of thy power, yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning, for thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Mm -hmm. Unto thee, O oh, my strength, will I sing, for God is my defense and the God of my mercy. And I think Jesus says something really powerful. He says, find out what this means. I require mercy and not sacrifice. I think about how so many people don't put themselves in somebody else's shoes and what they mm -hmm. might be going through that day. Mm -hmm. They might be having a, an off day or angry or something, and you just lash out because of how they're acting to you. But mm -hmm. if you could step back and see the picture of their life, mm -hmm. and what they're going through, you're like, oh, that makes sense why they're snapping yeah. at me. Mm -hmm. doesn't make it right what they're doing, but I can understand. Mm -hmm. You know, like with my, my dad, I realized some stuff that he went through and he lost mm -hmm. his anger on us. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, things that happened. Mm -hmm. So I realize seeing his story now, drawing back what he went through as a young person to an adult, mm -hmm. I can now say, wow, so I understand. But that's not always possible. Mm -hmm. You know your dad. You don't know that guy driving down the freeway, right? Right. I think it's really powerful that David is in this situation talking about people that Saul's men or whatever it is, and he's able to process. He praises God. Mm -hmm. Let them walk around the right. city like they're dogs and they don't even have enough to eat, but I'm going to praise you. Mm -hmm. And that's the end of it. When we praise God, then God steps in mm -hmm. and does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. But we have to be able to process that anger out. If we mm -hmm. can't process mm -hmm. the anger out, I think we're going to be in trouble. We are in trouble right now because we've <laughs> run out of time. <laughs> anyway, hope you're blessed and see you next time.